Hi, I'm here with my neighbour John, who's come to have a look at my carving just before it gets delivered to the client. And uh, I'm going to spin it round on camera so you can see it in three dimensions. And John's going to ask me a load of questions. I hope so. Okay. Right, I'll spin it round and you can uh, yeah. think about what you want to ask me. Yeah, no, I just wanted to know, it's, it seems like a, a very individual line design. Where did it all come from? Um, well, it's, it's, it's based on the style of, uh, of lions that were around in the 15th century, medieval lions, when people hadn't actually seen lions, mm -hmm. which is why it doesn't look um, as my dad would have it. It doesn't look like something you'd see at Whipsnade. Mm -hmm. um, this is, he, he showed me, the client came to me originally with this photograph, which he'd seen at an auction. And initially he asked me, can I reproduce that? And I could do an exact copy of it. But um, you can see that this had been cut out of a door lintel and that the features were quite badly eroded. And we talked about he's going to have it in his living room on a coffee table. And mm -hmm. we thought that it might actually be nicer to make a freestanding carving that was designed specifically for his mm -hmm. room. Um, so we decided to get rid of the door lintel. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's actually positioned so that, that I, I curled the tail round so that it can be seen from, from through the window mm -hmm. and the head's turned so it's going to be greeting people as they mm -hmm. come from the room. But how, would you, how, how would you describe the, the effect it has now, the way that you've actually made it? Because it has a different kind of look uh, and style and composure, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it was very interesting and I didn't realise at the outset how um, changing the positioning of it would affect um, the look of it, the, the kind of mood of it. Because, um, as I said, the, the one he showed me was quite eroded because it had been outside. And I showed him some photographs I'd taken previously of a lovely 15th century lion in a church in Essex, and the features are beautifully preserved, so we talked about using these features, the, the hair on the legs and the claws, um, for the basis of mine. But a lot of these tomb sculptures um, are bent forwards because they've got the knight's feet resting on them, but by making it upright so that it was more similar to his his original carving that he liked uh, and a freestanding carving by making it upright it started to look a bit victorian like the ones on trafalgar square so it was i had to be conscious of that the whole time to keep the 15th century vibe um but make a new sculpture mm -hmm. that's an interesting yeah, it's quite a, quite a subtle play. I hadn't realised how subtle it was going to be um, to go off-road and make a new design, but try and carve it within the what was my, It looks like a, um, a very kind of composite piece, I would say, uh, in the sense that, you know, it's, it's quite small, but it's very, and it's very detailed, but it, you know, it has this impressive sort of power to it. What parts of it do you find most difficult to... Oh. That's interesting. Interesting question. The stone that I used was not my first choice of stone. Um, in between finding the stone, actually, I have a piece. Can you pass me that piece? The original stone I wanted was this very dark stone that has loads of colour and texture in it. Um, it's called Great Tew Ironstone. And I thought that would really suit the, um, mm -hmm. the 15th century vibe of it. But between choosing it and making a model and the client agreeing on it and all, suddenly the stone wasn't available anymore. It had been available at big blocks, and then suddenly they were quarrying very small blocks. So I had to start a new piece, uh, to, to find a new piece of stone. I chose this, it's Ancaster limestone, because I knew that it um, could come with, with orangey texture and mm. um, a bit of an, I didn't want it to have something too white or too smooth because I thought it might look too modern, perhaps as if it had come from a garden centre. Uh, I wanted it to have character, 
But well, it certainly looks down. alive anyway. What the stone? The, 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 the carving. Yeah. Well, it was the nastiest bit of stone that I've carved in all my career, um, because some bits are flinty hard, and other bits are very very soft. So to go back to your question, the hard thing for me was to get a smooth flowing curve. Normally, it comes quite naturally. You just sort of go with the flow in your carving. But with this, I had to hack it, controlled hacking, to be honest. It was like carving flint. So getting that smooth curve was very hard. I would have liked to have got more curve, more sort of curl, like, like this one, into the main. But the stone just didn't allow it. Um, so that was very interesting. It, it kind of... Carving such a difficult piece of stone gave me um, more respect for the material. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting to go back to basics. Really. It's like trying to, <coughs> it's like trying to carve with a, uh, trying, trying to draw with a broken pencil. And I think that kind of influenced the uh, perhaps the character of the, of the line. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, I was going to say that you can, there is a certain kind of, is it tenuosity in, in the, the, when you look at the, the carving that it is so powerful, but at the same time you sense that it, it's very delicate as well. Um, it doesn't look delicate to, enough to break, but it, but it looks as if it's, you know, it's had to be put together with, with, with a lot of thought. Would you say that was true? You can tell me it's not. Uh, no, no, it was. It was. I was. I was. I was totally conscious. It was. It was interesting. I was kind of. It. It, um, it required a different kind of attention from me than. I had to be present, the whole time. I couldn't just drift off with it. Um, and also, I was very conscious because the client was very specific that he didn't want it to mm -hmm. be cute, um, or smug. Because I know. Um, Lucy, for having seen this from a, like a very early stage when you were yeah. planning it, on how much uh, time you had to put into getting absolutely what the face was going to look like, um, in mm -hmm. terms of you know what how what it was going to project, yeah. and and obviously that's paid off because uh, it definitely looks like a lion, but it's as you say not it's not a heraldic lion, and it's not a like a modern day. Mm. Oh, and it's not something which is uh, something you take to bed. No. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. That is it. exactly that. Finding the sort of sweet spot between those was uh, between pleasing the client. I was so aware that he didn't want it to be cute, um, but at the same time, it had to. Um, it couldn't look wrong to the modern viewer. And if you're not familiar with uh, medieval carving. Uh, you might go, oh, that looks a bit, that looks a bit rubbish, mm. <laughs> or something. But you know, the client knows uh, medieval carving very well, so it had to hit that medieval sensibility as well, and not look Victorian. That's the not making it look Victorian was the thing that I found uh, the most subtle and interesting. I, I don't think it does. I think it looks very kind of modern, without being you know, over the top, you know, sort of oh. modernistic, you know, yeah. you can have things which look kind of fresh and whatever, but um, so did you, has it been a voyage of enjoyment? Uh, yes, yes it has. <laughs> it was hard, it was hard because of the stone. But it has, yes. I do, I do love, I do love this kind of. Um, I think you didn't need to a smile on the lion then. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it this morning when the sun was coming in, and it looked like it's. It's nice because at different times of the day, his expression changes mm -hmm. according to. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you, John. <laughs>